Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. Dave connects with filmmaker Crystal Barnes and musician Ian Dunlop, who discuss the differences between being a Christian creative and a Christian who does creative works. Welcome to the latest edition of the Creatively Christian Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Ebert. I'm now joined by Crystal Barnes and Ian Dunlap. Uh, We're going to be talking about some creative projects they uh, have already done and uh, some things coming down the pike. Uh, We're really excited to have them along with us. Uh, Crystal and Ian, welcome to uh, Creatively Christian. All right. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, Dave. Now, Crystal and I met uh, almost seven years ago. Uh, and actually, uh, 2000, uh, I can't even remember. Uh, either. yeah, I think it was 2000, it might've been 2014 at Caritas. So that would have been eight years ago. Okay. Uh, we met, uh, you're, uh, doing the preliminary work on your first feature film, uh, mm-hmm. which is, uh, the law of Moises, uh, which is available still on, uh, Tubi TV and, uh, Pure Flix. It's a feature-length comedy uh, that uh, you filmed down in uh, Cairo. 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 You Cairo. Have, it's, okay. it's pronounced. They pronounce it Cairo. Cairo. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you you filmed it there on location. Uh, it's a take on the um, the 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 plagues of uh, uh, the Israelites leaving uh, leaving Egypt. Um, so uh, how? So I guess the first thing is. What inspired you to get into doing a feature length film? Because you were doing, uh, I think, weekly uh, sketch shows in the in the city mm-hmm. of Chicago at that point. Uh, Saturday, or uh, I think it was, or it was a it's Sunday night live, right? Spiritual night live. Spiritual night live. You were doing, um, and so you went from uh, live stage to doing a feature film. How did you get into that? Well, I, actually, I want to just make sure that I clarify things. We did sure. not uh, wholly uh, 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 film that on location in Cairo. We did a little bit of background stuff, B-roll type stuff. We'll be, we did film. We filmed it in Homewood and Flossmore, okay, Illinois. So we were in the south suburbs, but we did do some B-roll and stuff in Cairo. So we, we were down there a couple of days to do that. Um, but to your question, um, well, I've, I've been kind of in the film acting business most of my life. So I've always, I started out actually, um, and trained as an actor and went to school for it and did that for a number of years. And then I think I might've, you know, told this story, people who know me after a while, I just got, you know, two things happened. One, I got tired of waiting for someone else to give me a job. And two, um, I got tired of, you know, my agent sending me out for stuff that I felt uncomfortable doing as a Christian. Mm. Um, So I thought, and this is what I really believe God uh, put on my, in my, my, my heart was to just provide opportunities, not just for myself, but for other Christians that I knew of specifically and, and other people that I'm, I didn't know opportunity so and I know it's happening all over but for me in my world it wasn't really happening for us so um, I started out just writing children's plays that went into short films and sketch comedy as you mentioned Dave uh, with Spiritual Night Live and I had always wanted to do feature films Um, it was just you know a couple of things like most people that held me back a finances and, and be really the um, understanding and the knowledge of how you were to do a feature film. Um, it, it's, it's similar to a short film, but it's not because it's way more money and it's similar to uh, stage, but it's not because they're, I mean, live stage is, is totally different animal than film. Um, right. But I've always wanted to do it. And I, uh, at one point I wanted to, I wanted to like write some kind of a uh, Sunday uh, Bible story, but not it be a Sunday Bible story. So I really, mm-hmm. I thought, what about putting something in present day and seeing how we could make that um, preach 
the gospel without being preachy. Mm. Um, and so then I actually, I think the week I was, I started thinking about that. I'm hurt. Uh, Cairo, Illinois had a flood. And I didn't know that there was a Cairo, Illinois. And I was like, well, there's a Cairo, Illinois. And it's, well, I thought it was Cairo, as, as, as most people think. Uh, it, it is spelled Cairo. Um, and I thought that was interesting. And I went down just to visit, just because. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of helped me to bring stuff to life. So in a nutshell, I started writing about it and thinking about it. And it was a 10-year process of actually wow. from the time I thought about it, writing it, and be, it being produced. So, yeah, I don't know if that really answers your question, but <laughs> I always wanted to do it, and I want to continue to do more if I can. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, not to just completely ignore our other guest, uh, uh, Ian, he is uh, – He's a, a musician and writer. Um, he's got a uh, gospel single coming out this spring called I Know. Uh, he said it's based on Jeremiah 29, 11. And uh, we'll uh, pop up his email. So anybody that uh, as you're hearing his story, um, you want to get in contact with him, find out more about this, uh, the music he's got coming. Uh, Ian, want to welcome you in as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So tell us about you and the creative things that you're doing for the kingdom. Well, um, like we were talking before, it's one of those things where I uh, I love to serve in the body. Uh, always been kingdom minded. Um, I've got two churches that I support right now. Uh, one is shout out to the Streams Church in Indianapolis, and the other uh, is uh, Overflowing Life Worship Center, also in Indianapolis. Um, mm -hmm. I serve both of those on Sundays, and then throughout the week, I, I run media, sound, and things like that on both of their behalfs as needed. Um, I also uh, drive for uber separately but that's a totally separate thing but uh <laughs> um you gotta pay but, the bills <laughs> yeah you got to you gotta, gotta keep paid um but also um yeah basically i'm moving into more of the production side um the gospel side and then uh writing as well in terms of scripts and short films and things of that nature nice so uh for anybody uh wants to check out uh his uh, single that's coming out this uh this uh late spring early summer uh i know uh, drop him an email and let him know that you're interested. You want to check it out. Uh, it's minstrelsworkshop at gmail.com. Uh, so we bring you guys together. Uh, Chris and I had talked about a month ago uh, about, um, and she interviewed me because uh, I'm a children's pastor, uh, a credential minister uh, at, in here in Illinois. And we talked about um, what's kind of, but not really a sequel to um your hit series Churched, which uh, will pop up their information. You can find out uh, more about Churched at Churched Web Series on Facebook or uh, find them on uh, the Creative Motion Network on Roku. Uh, so I, uh, from what I understand, the two of you are working together on this new series, which is kind of a sequel, but not really. So tell us about this new uh, series that you're working on. And, and uh, don't uh, reveal too much because I know that uh, as you're creating something, you don't want to give away too much because it could change and, and things like that. So tell us what you can about uh, what we uh, what you're working on. Um, well, I uh, so there's a little bit of a mix up. So uh, Ian and I are working on a feature film that's okay. not the, the web series, but I am working on um, and I have gotten a lot of input from Ian because he's definitely been. Oh, hugely helpful. Um, but I am working on a prequel um, to church. Okay. Uh, which is a little bit more um, serious. Uh, I'm hoping that it's enough comedy still uh, there, uh, but it's, it's, it's serious. So it's before. So if you've ever seen church, it's, we're looking at before what happens then. Um, and um, gosh, um, I mean, there's some exciting things right now happening. Um, I am, should be, uh, hopefully, um, I need to get, I'm still working on stuff. Every time I send it to a producer, they're like, okay, uh, change this. It's always something to change. It's never perfect. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm aware we're going to get to a point. The, the goal is we're hoping to uh, pitch it to a production company um, that will finance it to uh, get it um, on one of the, streaming networks. We're not sure what or where or how that at all, all, all goes, but um, it's exciting because there are some definite, definite interest in it. Mm -hmm. um, I say that it will be 
Um, uh, if you like church, I'm hoping that you'll like this as well. It would definitely be different. Um, but um, at, at, the, at the moment right now, it's called Damascus. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and then the, the project that Ian and I are working on um, is a feature film, too. And um, we're still kind of working on a lot of stuff. Uh, but the tentative name is Three Days, and we're exploring the three days um, after Jesus was buried and before he was he resurrected. Okay. So we're we're exploring that in this in this project. So Ian is obviously based in the Indianapolis area. You're in the Chicagoland area. How did you guys connect and uh, start to collaborate? You want to take that one? Go ahead. <laughs> oh well. Um, we met at Caritas. Um, okay. I'm guessing this was, so we're not quite sure when. <laughs> it was obviously before the whole pandemic thing. Um, so it was the last one before that. Okay. Um, I was actually teaching a class, and I can't even remember what that was. Filmmaking? Mm-hmm. No, I don't know what it was. Honestly. That had, that was part of it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so he was. He came to the class, and we. Uh, afterwards, he said, I'm working on a script, uh, and would you like to read it? And I'm like, sure. And I read it, and I was like, wow, this is great, you know. And um, But nothing really came of it. I don't know. I think he was just, like, looking for feedback or just for someone to read. Um, and then probably a year later, I was like, I'm working on the church. And I'm working on, now I'm trying to look, work on Damascus. And I really need someone that I feel like I, I I can write with. And I just sent them an email and say, hey, Ian, would you like to write this with me? And and that's it. That, that, that's history. Very nice. Now, um, Ian, I know that currently uh, all of your uh, productions, everything that you're putting forth is for for the kingdom. Uh, was that some, Is that a change in your life or have you always been kind of on that path? Or did you have a time where you were writing uh, – for other purposes? Well, uh, it's a little bit of both, to be honest. Uh, there's, you you know, when you're walking through certain things in your life and you live a little and you see certain paths that you're going through, it's like, okay, this looks good, this looks good, this looks great. And you start making decisions based upon what works best for you, what you think works best. Well, as you know, as, as all of us have gone through, uh, all that glitters is not gold and we don't always make the best decisions on those paths. Mm-hmm. So, um, after I lost a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and money, um, <laughs> I had to reevaluate some things. And then uh, the Lord has been very gracious in dealing with me on those things. So all that being said, uh, I'm back on the path that I should have been on all along. Um, the detours, I learned a lot of things from those detours. Uh, but to put it very simply, I'm on his path now. Um, that being said, I still have some outstanding works from the other paths that if I the Lord allows me to, I'd like to, you know, do something with, you know, and live for nothing else to where I've already put all the effort into them. I want to try to at least have some type of fulfillment or productivity from them, mm-hmm. you know? So that being said, working on that, but aside from that, um, it's, it's me and God against the world. Really. It really is at this point. It's one of those things where, um, I have to acknowledge who he is in my life and what he's done. And I would be very remiss if I didn't at this point, you know, I, I, I know better by now, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. the other projects that you're talking about that, and I don't want to get into specifics, but are these things that, that God can actually redeem, even if they're not designed specifically for kingdom advancement, mm. but through your talent, through your ability, can he redeem those? Or are these things that it's like, I just want to get them finished and say, I'm finished but it's not necessarily for the kingdom that they can be redeemed. Well, I'll put it like this. Their original intent was not necessarily kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that in terms of redemption, only the Holy Spirit can, can establish that. It's one of those things where I can put it out there and say, okay, this is what it is. Um, Maybe I might get some feedback from Crystal or other people as far as what it could be. Um, but that's that's a tall order for me to answer that question right now. Yeah. It's just I'll just put it out there and see what the Lord says. Um, just like, for instance, the script that I allowed her to see that I showed her was not in and of itself a Christian script. Now, I did have uh, Bible elements in it. Like, for instance, the original premise is 
it's a vampirus who was turned. However, uh, she still tries to walk with God even after she's been turned. Hmm. And so it's one of those things where it's it's out of the box. But you know, I'm like I'm hoping that there can be some redeeming quality of it that someone can turn around and use. But if not, I have to be satisfied with that too. Yeah, because I'm just thinking that. Yeah, there are some secular movies and secular books, secular music that even though it's not God serving, God has used it. Um, yeah. And and I'm thinking in particular, there was a song by Pink that came out 12 years ago, maybe. It was called You're Perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. It had an expletive there. But um, when and it's, you know, kind of shedding light on my testimony, when I was in some of the pit darkest moments of my depression, that song God used to kind of lift my spirit a little bit, mm. even though it wasn't God honoring, God still was able to use it. So there's oh, some yeah. reaction to even the most secular of music or art, because it's all God's to begin with. It's whether or not we want to let him use it. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. And now that you said that, yes, then there are there are some cases that I could point to that uh, uh, that might turn into something. Um, I, I, for one, I still listen to a lot of secular music, uh, not for much, not so much for edification, but because part of me wants to keep a finger on the pulse of what people are listening to today. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, from a strictly business standpoint, also from a, okay, what, what, what am I hearing? Is there God in this? You know, mm-hmm. can, can I find God in this melody or in this beat or in, you know, uh, I try to steer clear of the videos because the, the yeah, uh, anyway. Um, but I tried as far as listening to the music, I listen to that quite a bit. Yeah, and there are certain things that are beyond redemption. I think uh, Cardi B's song of the year from last year is probably mm-hmm. beyond redemption. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, yep, moving on, <laughs> yeah, moving on, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to um say, I, I think even, even in as you said, in other art forms, in filmmaking and, you know, writing, there's always secular um, art that you could go back to and it, it could be some, there could be some edification. And in fact, I think, and I always tell people that if you're looking to be a filmmaker, if you're looking to be, a, you know, in the arts, you have to know that craft. And in some ways, in, in knowing the craft, you have to see what else is out there and how they're doing it because what the world does is they do art excellently you know and uh, so we can learn from that and we shouldn't like say just because it's not something that we would uh, is a glorifying god that but we should learn we could still learn from it absolutely like the, i can't remember the artist i think it might have been taylor swift um there was a video that she had just released this is a few months back and i think she had six million views in five days or something, yeah. some, some ridiculous number like that. So yeah, it was. I I remember like that. That, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? So when I, I see things like that, I'm like, okay, how did they do that? And how can we duplicate that in the kingdom? Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. So that's what we're looking at, what I'm looking at. And um, one thing that, that I deal with in comedy is the, the idea of, are you, a Christian who does comedy or are you a Christian comedian? Mm. And for you all, uh, do you consider yourselves cr- Christian creatives or Christians that do creative projects or is there a difference? Mm. Okay, Dave, you're going a little deep here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say in my case, uh, I'm probably both. I probably told the line on both. That that'd be my honest answer. Um, because here's the thing: I want them, I want people to see God when they see me at all times. Um, but sometimes, you know, in order in order to get clean, sometimes you gotta get dirty, and I do understand that. So yeah, I'll probably say I told the line of both. What what about you, Crystal? Um, I, I probably am a would lean towards, and I probably am a little bit of both. But I probably lean towards I'm a Christian doing. What, what was it? What was the second one? <laughs> Whatever that second one was. Um, oh, you're creative or a, a Christian who does creative work? A Christian who does creative work. And I say that because I feel like, especially on a film set where you're seeing someone every day for three or four or five weeks, you have an opportunity uh, to minister to them in a way that you, you can't 
when someone just sees the film on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so you could be a part of, you know, some horror movie, you know, I, I do tend to want to be a part of projects that have some, something about it that there's some faith. In fact, I did a short film not too long ago that's not a Christian film, but it's about these young kids who are really wanting to do something better and get out of the west side of Chicago. And so there's some faith, there's a faith element in that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but on that set, I can be Christian and minister to people who are not. Because um, I think sometimes that has a bigger imp imp impact, and especially it's more, for me, it's a more direct a ministry than if a million people went to see the film and not just, you know, got something out of it, but not really got to know who I am as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I and I, I really believe it's important, at least I like to have non-Christians and Christians working together. Otherwise, you know, who are we really ministering to? If we're all Christians, are all, if it's like, you know, if you never bring anyone to church, you know, that's cool, you know, but how are anyone going to listen to the, you know, we all need to continue to listen to the word, but how do other people hear the word? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do you, what do you define, or what makes up a Christian film or Christian TV show? Does it have to specifically uh, guide you to the word or can it be just something that is done creative that's entertaining that honors God in the the uh, the excellence with which it's produced where do you draw that line or is there a line between what makes it a Christian what makes it not a Christian production I'll be honest I think that line is being defined daily and, and, and the reason I say that is because you see a lot of things out there now, whether it be music, film, or the media, that are very motivational, inspirational. Um, they tickle your ear, they make you feel good, they sound great. Um, but if you listen closely, there's no God mentioned anywhere in it. Now, I might have uh, Christian overtones, it might have even some biblical nuance to it, but God himself or Holy Spirit himself is not mentioned. And so that I want to steer clear of, because here's the thing. I don't want to get all the way to this far from the finish line and then not mention the creator, because he said, if you deny me in front of the world, I will deny you in front of my father. So I don't want to get that point. Now, at the same time, I want to I don't want to browbeat. You know what I mean? Because people, they don't like that, generally speaking. You know, I want like. Okay, I was Gary named someone, but I won't. Um, but to put it very simply, I want to be able to be so slick to where I can bring you Christ without having to bash you with Christ. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want to force feed it. You want to present it in a way that's palatable. Absolutely. Which, but not in a way to deny it, because I think that too many Christians are so worried about being palatable that they sugarcoat it. But at the same time, you also, again, you can't just beat them over the head with the Bible because that's not going to work either. You've mm -hmm. got to find that delicate balance where they can ingest and you, you can plant the seed. And whether or not they're the fertile soil or the thorn covered soil, that's up to them. But yeah. getting that seed there, that's your job. Yeah, absolutely. Plant seeds. Plant that's seed, all we're absolutely. here to do. All right. So, you know, this is a great conversation. I, I love the, the debate between and the discussion between what makes it Christian, what makes it not Christian, because I think too often we think that the, there's kind of two sides. Like they will look at, you know, the, uh, the Kendrick brothers and say, well, they're just preaching to the choir. So it's not really a Christian film because it's not there's no evangelical nature to it. It's not reaching mm -hmm. out across. But if it encourages Christians to go out and do what they're called to do, if it uplifts them, then it is evangelical in nature, I think. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys think about that? Should a Christian production be reaching out to beyond the church walls? Or is it okay to reach within the church walls uh, for the building up of the body? Or can it be both? I think if, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of like what Ian said, I think you 
I don't I don't think there's like one hard line, you know, okay, here if it if it's got three word three times it says God, it's Christian. And if it doesn't, it's not. I don't I don't think we can do that. And I think and I think every person is different and every person can be inspired and moved in a different way. In the same way I could sit in the same servant sermon uh church sermon as you guys and not be moved by one thing but be moved by something else. It could be the the worship that moves me. It could be the sermon. It could be just someone's testimony. Um, so I think as Christians, I think we should just try to be moved by the spirit and as the spirit leads us to do that. And I think as that, as we do that, that's, that's what a Christian product is. If, if I'm feel so moved to write something and I, you know, it's really the spirit leading. I, no one can deny, you know, that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's so, but each person is different. And so we have to be open, you know, at the same time, knowing what, what's fact, what's factual by, biblically, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time. So it's, yeah. Yeah. And, and also to touch a little bit uh, on that as well. Um, it is not my job to draw you. The Lord said he would draw all men unto him. It is my job to preach to you the gospel, all the ends of the world. That's what he told me to do. So if I try to overstep that boundary, I'm trying to put myself in God's place. I don't belong there. I have to stay in my lane. Mm. And so that being said, it's one of those things where, uh, and oh, piggyback on that. Israel Holton, the, the gospel artist, he said it, and I'm paraphrasing what he said like this. He said, we're always good at bringing folk into the church but we're horrible at keeping them there. Mm -hmm. And so that being said, we have to find that gentle, delicate balance between ministering to those out past the four walls, but then making sure that all the needs within the four walls get met and stay met because church folks can get burnt out real quick when we're serving and we're moving and we're hustling. I've done it myself. There was a period of time in my life to where for six months, I told God, stupid as I was, I don't want to pray. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. You go your way and I go my way. Now, but for his grace and mercy, he kept his hand on me that entire time. Uh, and I'm still, even to this day, though it happened a long while back, I'm repenting for that six month period because Lord, how stupid was I to ever tell you something like that? I need you more than the next breath I breathe. I don't, I want to make sure that you stay, keep your hand on me. If I say anything like that stupid again, Charge it to my head, not my heart. Please don't take your hand from me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so all that to say, again, that's one of those other tricky things where we have to be always mindful of who we're ministering to, both inside and outside the church. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, I always feel like if, as long as I'm growing closer to God, I'm ministering, you know? I, I think you can, we can do so many great things, but if we've not, grown closer to God doing those things than we've not, then what, 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 what are we doing? I have mm -hmm. to grow closer to God in, in whatever I'm doing. So, um, yeah, even, even through disappointments and, uh, bad things and all kinds of stuff, if I'm growing closer to God, that's what matters. Yeah. And I think that that's a good word because if you, if you're growing closer to God, you're going to hear his voice clearer. And that's going to feed into the things that you take on. And it's just going to be saturated with his voice regardless because he, you can't help it. Because if you're that close to him, it's just going to ooze through you. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. So that may answer this next question, but I'll, I'll still pose it. Uh, for anybody that wants to follow in your steps, uh, maybe they want to be a musician and write gospel music. Maybe they want to create uh, stage, TV, or or film productions. Uh, whoever wants to take it first, take it. What is your uh, advice for somebody that's maybe starting out or thinking about starting out? Make sure you're called to do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of folks out there now in the industry, both in film television and in music that don't belong there. I just I hate to say it like that, but it's, it's, it's oh, the truth. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you've seen, you've heard, but because that was their heart's desire and they wanted to get something out to the public without understanding the ramifications of what, what they do or how it sounds or how it looks or how it makes you feel. 
um, they didn't think it through really when they went that route. And it's one of those things where e even I myself, you know, I, I do music and, and I love doing music, but before I ever release anything, okay, Lord, is this what I'm supposed to do? You know, mm -hmm. because I have no, it's bigger than just putting it out there. There's people at the tail end that you'll have to impact once you do, and you can't take that back once it's out. It's forever. So I look at it like, okay, if I release this, how will this edify God? Who can I touch? That's the basic question you need to ask. And if you can't answer that question, honestly, with leading from the Holy Spirit, don't touch it. That's that's just me. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think um, I, I think the process is as important as the end product. Okay. So if you're not like a great filmmaker, but you are doing it and you are doing it for God or doing it to encourage others, it may not, you know, we, you may not win awards, so to speak, but you can really touch people. And so I think, I mean, I understand what you mean. There are people who are totally gifted and those people really should uh, make sure that they're calling and they're doing what exactly that they, they should do. But there are times when people, I've I've been on an a choir and I'm surely not called to sing, <laughs> but but if I want to encourage people, I, I you know, and and that process helps because what does that help me do? A, it told me that I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, uh, but B, it taught me how to work with people and different and and, and see other people's gifts. But there is a process too, and I think for me, if I had to give and advice to anyone starting or even has already started and wants to quit, I think you have to continue to understand the perseverance and having a small circle of people around you are probably outside of God, and I'm, I'm saying that God is a given, but perseverance and you're a core group of people because I've cried and I've said, I'm going to stop, I'm not going to do this again disappointment happens people let you down things just you know i so if you if you can persevere and you can get a core group of people around you that will help you um and tell you the truth um and encourage you i think that's more than any way anything because i know we we've, we've all heard the term you could be talented but it's the heart the most talented you know, per person in the world, can, but if they don't have the heart to, what what's the use of the talent, you know? Yeah. And I think that, honestly, both answers are true. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are certain people who are called to something and, and they're supposed to do maybe more things, bigger things with that gift or talent. Mm -hmm. But then there are those who maybe are not as gifted or talented or, or even called other than they're just being the willing hands and feet uh, uh, to serve. And the difference is what God reveals to you through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's the importance of whether you're called or you're just serving uh, in a role that, that needs to be filled. I think the difference is determined by your relationship with the Lord. And he can tell you and show you, yes, you're supposed to sing. Yes, you're supposed to sing back up. And things solo. You're supposed to say way back. Yeah, right. way back. Look, <laughs> cut her mic off. Just to... <laughs> there you go. All right. And, and if it gets too bad, the pastor comes up to you and says, "Yeah, I feel like the Lord is is going to shift you in your ministry." <laughs> oh, you right. got that? The, the 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 pastors I'm using. Oh, amen, amen. While they're pulling you off the stage, right? <laughs> With the hook, right? Yeah, right. it's the big hook, right? <laughs> right. Well, in church, it's not a big hook. It's a shepherd's staff. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's whatever's yeah. nearby. That's what that is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's a Bible. Yeah, it's a Bible. That's where you browbeat somebody. It's like, you don't belong. <laughs> 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 or, 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 or first, yeah, um, uh, Brother Ian, I need to see you immediately after service <laughs> in the exactly. office privately. God bless you. <laughs> Uh huh. God bless. You said you get that. You Always, know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Uh, so as we wrap up our, our conversation, um, 
I'll give you guys uh, the the floor. Uh, tell people that are listening or watching, how can they uh, support you in your different projects? How can they maybe even get involved uh, uh, with uh, what you're doing? Um, so whoever wants to take it first, go for it. Ladies first. Oh, I knew Aww. it. I knew it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, gosh. Um, so it's hard right now because everything is in its writing form. So there's not something to kind of, you know, be a part of at this game. Although I guess if you have seen church on YouTube or um, Facebook, uh, you want to continue to like that or the law of voices or go to my um, uh, website um, and just kind of be in touch. I know. And that's kind of how, you know, E and I started working together. It was, it, it didn't happen right away. There is, you know, a year or so before we kind of got in touch and say, hey, let's do this. Um, but yeah, but um, I, I think I usually, I would put stuff on Facebook to say, hey, this is what's coming up for me. Um, and then I think most important is just prayer because we all, who needs enough, who has enough prayer? Um, so if, if you just want to say a prayer, if, even if you forget my name, um, and you remember my face and you know who you're talking about. God knows who you're talking about. So I, I appreciate prayer. Okay, perfect. And for uh, you, Ian, uh, how can people support or find or connect with you about uh, uh, the things that you're involved with? All right, let me make a quick correction. The email yes. you've got, it's themestralsworkshop at gmail.com. If they use what's up there, they're not going to get me at all ever. <laughs> so Oh, I forgot sure. the the. Yeah, the the menstrual workshop at gmail.com. Um, I don't want them to get syntax errors. He gave me the wrong email address. He's a messed up already. So, yeah, <laughs> so that's out. my fault. I missed the the. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that correction. But uh, uh, honestly, uh, for real, they, uh, that is the main way to get a hold of me right now. Um, I'm working on websites, uh, promotional materials, things like that. Um, I'm really, literally uh, just starting out in in this part of the ministry i've been doing research and reading and watching and learning and growing for years this is my, actually my first time actually taking steps towards this route um but like i mentioned to you earlier i'm, I'm very patient i'm not in a rush to to move in that sense uh, i want to make sure it's right and i want to make sure it's right for those who i'm working with and and, and things like that before i, I uh, move in the process so that is the best way to get a hold of me um, I'm going to work on social media better. I promise Crystal, I promise you as well. Um, <laughs> the joke before this podcast started was that, uh, I, well, not a joke, literally, I, I don't really have a lot of social media. Um, I can live without it personally, but because it's a necessary evil for lack of a better term for the day and age we live in, I'm moving more and more into it. So y'all pray for me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm working on it. going to get better. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the meantime, this is the email. And then just because you were gracious enough to include me in this, in this podcast, when I do move my next step, I'll even give you an exclusive next go around. Okay. Oh, great. All right. All right. Round of applause. <laughs> awesome. Well, Ian and Crystal, thank you so much for joining us here on the creatively Christian. Uh, we'll definitely keep in touch and keep following up, uh, when, uh, Damascus comes out, uh, uh, comes around to casting mm -hmm. and shooting and then, uh, yeah. When uh, uh, it's called Three Days, right? Is the uh, feature film, right? Tentatively, yeah. yeah. Tentatively. That's, that's how TBD. TBD. <laughs> to BD. All right. Well, we're really excited to see what uh, you're all doing. And uh, I thank you for joining us on Creatively Christian. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hold it. Hold oh, it. Hold oops. It. Okay. Where'd you get that shirt, man? This? Oh, yeah. This is uh, at uh, my uh, comedy team's uh, website. It's. Uh, shop.wellversedcomedy.com okay. so i will actually just put it up on the on the screen just for people to see because all all the proceeds are going to help us um build our comedy ministry uh also to uh, allow us to travel to places that can't afford to hire a comedy team okay. and and uh you know bring comedy to churches so uh, all the profits off the shirts they go towards uh, building our, our ability to travel so this is the hashtag OGHG, our gifts for his glory. We've nice. also got some uh, T-shirts uh, with our, our logo on it and things like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's where this came from. 
my wife wasn't a fan of the design. She goes, oh, that's so big. I'm like, yeah, well, it's got to be seen on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> just tell her you're just like the Pharisees. Can't please nobody. Oh, no. no. She, don't tell she's her. over there on the couch. You're about to get me in trouble. Oh, we, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for letting him post us. God bless you. Yay. Exactly. Or, God, God bless you in your ministry. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, Crystal and, and Ian, it's been a joy. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we'll talk to you next time on the Creatively Christian Podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. To see the resources and links that were mentioned in today's episode, please head over to theophanymedia.com forward slash arc. To support the show and join our patron community, where you'll get extra access and exclusive content, visit us at patreon.com forward slash creatively Christian. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Dave Ebert, and Rachel Anna. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer did our music. And Jake Dobrins produces and edits the show.